けの音ずれも許せないまま全ての君の言葉が全ての君の仕草が僕にはまだ泣かなすぎてはい、フェニックス from Apocalypse Aerosoft here again and today I'm going to go through a tutorial on how to paint your airsoft gun or actual AR in this camo paint scheme which I think is pretty nice uh, so things you are going to need are painters tape an exacto knife for just in case a paper plate your base coat of paint your secondary color paint and your third color paint you're also going to need a uh, container to put water in a household sponge and a sand brick which is just a little cushiony brick of sandpaper very fine, you want the fine. And then finally you're going to want your gun. This is my SR-16 which I customized and turned it from a CQB ambidextrous M4 variant to a DMR. There is $700 on the table right now. And a lot of you people are asking, why the hell do we need water and a sponge? Wouldn't that just ruin the paint job? You shut your face. I'm doing the tutorial. You shut the fuck up. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and start this tutorial. Now, one of the first things you're going to want to do is um, take off the stuff that you do not want painted. So, like me. If you want to paint the QD sling mount, you can go ahead and do that. I'm going to take it off because it's just going to get in the way. And uh, if you're wanting to paint your mags to match your gun, I would recommend leaving a mag in the mag well instead of taping it off. That way you can at least get one mag to match the paint job on the gun itself. And uh, at the same time you won't be you know, painting anything up here on the mag, or the paint will be, and the paint will be getting inside the mag well. Uh, you're also going to want to want to remove any optic you have, even if, even if you want to paint it, because you're going to want to paint the optic separately from the gun, because you're want, going to want the camo to wrap around the gun itself as well as the optic that you have. You're also going to want to remove uh, bipods for the same exact reason. And also, just in case you want to remove any kind of optic or anything, you won't have a. Uh, God damn it. You won't have a uh, huge black unpainted spot on the rails. Now, vertical grips and angle grips are fine to keep on the gun because, you know, if you're like me, you're never going to take the thing off but if uh, you want you can take them off and paint them I'm not gonna take this off my gun so hell even if I do I can just spritz it and uh, also for me I am taking off the rubber pad on my uh, buttstock because I don't want this to get ruined now you can just take your rubber butt pad and your sling mounts just kind of toss them onto the side a little bit, but keep track of them. And uh, the next step is to tape off anything you don't want painted with the uh, painter's tape. Now, for those of you who are wondering or have never taped off an optic before, I here's how I usually do it. I kind of just rest it in there like so, kind of get it base pressed around the lens. And take the excess and just press it all inside there. See, that's what it would look like whenever you pat it all down in there. 
and then you do the same thing to the opposite side. Okay, now that I've taped off my optic, which is the only thing I wanted taped, we are going to go ahead and uh, start with the first coat of paint. Now what you're going to want to do is uh, take your base coat, which in my case is khaki, and uh, just start gently layering it over your firearm. Okay, now just give that time to dry, and then we'll flip it over and uh, take care of the other side. Okay, now that it's somewhat dry, we're going to want to uh, take the fire selector to flip it to semi and uh, spray this little black smudge right there and get rid of other spots that we missed. Alright, now then, now that it's dry, let's uh, flip her over. I don't have to worry about uh, moving this fire selector to get underneath it with a can because it's super glued on there. Because I put in a new gearbox that only takes the fire selector on this side, so this is just for looks. And since the gun's going to be on semi motto most of the time anyway, I figure just do that for when I'm in game. So, anyway, I flip that over, flip the bipod over. Flip the sight on its side, and we can get underneath it, and uh, just start spraying down. And uh, what you're going to want to do is do even layers of uh, paint, just lightly dust it. Just go back and forth, you don't want to barrel into it like, you don't want to do that. Alright, now then just... Let that dry and then we'll start part two. You're going to want to get a net. I handmade this one because I wanted a personal look. You then drape it over your firearm. Just let it fall where it may. Like so. And then you uh, start painting in a, in a W to give it that off pattern look. That looks pretty nice. Okay, you just let that sit there and dry for a few minutes. And then we'll come back to it. Here is where the uh, paper plate and the uh, sponge come in. What you're going to want to do is take your olive green. No. Just puddle it, puddle it in there. You're going to want to take your sponge, dip into the wet paint, just kind of dab it in, uh, on the firearm. I want to kind of put some in the brown, but not too much. You really want this on the, mostly the tan part. If you want to add more green, you, you obviously can, but I prefer to just put a little bit of it. I like to have a more khaki and brown than I do green, so. Okay, this next step, if you want, you can go ahead and skip, but uh, this is where the sponge and water come in. What you're going to want to do is take your uh, khaki and uh, gently just mist the gun. You don't want to get it too much, you just want to mist it. You don't really go ahead and flip it over. This one you gotta work fast on. Alright. You take your sponge, you dip it in the water. And then you just start 
scuffing up the paint a little bit, trying to merge the colors and make it blend better. This gives it that uh, old, worn look. Now you don't want to press too hard, but you want to kind of apply some kind of pressure. That's done. We can bring it inside for the final step. Now again, this last step, you can go ahead and skip it if you don't want to do it. You can just go ahead and put the uh, uh, clear sealer on there. Uh, you want to be sure you either get the flat or a matte finish. What this does, I'm using Valspar, but you can use Rust-Oleum or whatever kind of clear finisher they have out there. What this does is it seals the paint job in, and it's uh, less likely to scuff up and get ruined. But, <laughs> ironically, this is what this step is. What you're going to want to do is, uh, this, I call this the wearing step. So, what it is, is uh, you take the little sand block, and you just start sanding down the gun and uh, the jagged areas to give it that wear down look like it's been used a lot. A lot. But you don't want to do too much because you don't want it looking like it's obvious that you sanded it. See how it's starting to uh, take shape on the front iron sight. It's getting a little scuffed and ruined. Giving it a nice touch and look as if it was been used already. Remember, you don't want to do it too much. You just want it looking like it's been worn down over a period of time because it's been used so much. Here's the finished product. I think it looks pretty nice. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Hopefully it was a big help for you in deciding how to paint your gun. I actually like this paint scheme so much, I put it on my uh, 1911's handle grip. So. Hopefully, I can do more paint job schemes, or paint schemes, like uh, come up with some weird woodland thing for the other guys. But uh, until then, my name is Phoenix from Apocalypse Airsoft, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Let's go.